This is the Business of Apps podcast, bringing you actionable insights from the leaders of the global app industry and the world's fastest growing apps. You can find more app news, data and analysis over at businessofapps.com. Welcome to the Business of Apps podcast. On this show, we invite app industry professionals to cover various topics. We promise to do our best to keep it both insightful but brief. In this episode, we have a returning guest, Lexi Sito, Senior Marketing Insights Manager at App Any. Lexi, welcome back to the Business of Apps podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, Gen Z, Generation Z or Gen Z for short, is a demographic cohort succeeding millennials and preceding Generation Alpha. To be honest, I've never heard about Generation Alpha. But still, it includes people who were born between mid to late 1990s and early 2010s. Now, it is well established that 98% of Gen Z owns a smartphone and the age when they get it is 10. Obviously, the reason they get a smartphone is to use apps. And so today we have Lexi to explain how to build a winning Gen Z marketing strategy. But first of all, for the sake of people who didn't listen to you on the previous episode, Lexi, please tell us about yourself briefly. Of course. Thank you so much again for having me. I'm Lexi Sito. I am the Senior Market Insights Manager at AppAnnie, and I am responsible for analyzing and reporting on market trends, consumer behavior, and insights on the mobile economy. I've been in data and analytics for nine years and working at AppAnnie for five now. Okay, terrific. I think it's important for an app marketer always consider differences between generations, their priorities. Ideally, has a decent understanding of a generation's psychology to be responsible and efficient with their app marketing strategy. That's my understanding. So how is Gen Z different from other generations when it comes to mobile? Any numbers to mention to give our listeners a quick snapshot? Absolutely. So you you already mentioned that around 98% of Gen Z report owning a smartphone. So that's pretty key in the analysis. And and what that shows us is that Gen Z is the only generation, uh, you know, to to grow up with a smartphone in their hands. And this sort of naturally leads to a different psychology when approaching virtually every area of their life, um, from socializing to interacting with brands to gaming. And a couple other stats that I think are really important to illustrate this. So we saw that actually this year in Q3, Gen Z as kind of an average user base has grown two times as fast as older demos in the U.S. on mobile. And then we also saw that Gen Z engages 20% more frequently in apps than older demos. Um, And that's really important. Like every engagement or every session is an opportunity to delight a consumer. Um, And whether that's providing a good entertainment experience, like on TikTok or Snapchat, for instance, or delivering value, like an efficient food order, um, or it could even be brand awareness via an ad. So it's incredibly important to prioritize those mobile experiences for this mobile native generation. Yeah, that's that's totally true. This is their window to the world. Uh, the probably the first toy, they, like the real first toy that is you know doing the most for them uh, on top of everything else they experience in this age. Right? They're uh, they're a virtual f- friend in many respects, uh, hopefully for the best. <laughs> now, smartphones have been with us since the dawn of the iPhone in 2007. So it's about to uh, to turn 13 years old this year is an eternity for tech, right? But fairly modest period of time for a human lifespan time scale. How this combination of a particular age and smartphones in the hands of this generation, girls and boys, makes Gen Z attractive to app marketers. Why should they consider reaching out this generation? Great question. So... I mean, first of all, there is kind of the blanket statement for all of mobile. You know, your mobile device is kind of your most personal device. We trust it with some of our most sensitive information, like our banking accounts. It's sort of our life admin. So from from that standpoint, just for mobile overall, so such an important channel for personal, timely, relevant, personalized communication. And for Gen Z specifically, these are their formative years and their brand preference preferences are not yet set, uh, which gives companies the opportunity to define themselves in a way that resonates with this mobile native generation and earn that loyalty. 
Um, you know, Gen Z controls nearly around $150 billion in spending power, um, and they influence well over $600 billion annually. So mobile offers a really great way to garner brand awareness and trust for also for later life milestones. So for instance, within finance, um, if you cultivate you know, p- uh, a strong presence among peer-to-peer payment apps, which we've mm-hmm. seen have a strong usage among Gen Z. So um, for companies thinking about growing on mobile with this kind of mobile savvy generation for people in the finance industry, this could represent significant inroads for transitioning that user base to banking or other financial services that they don't need maybe right now um, in the age bracket of 16 to 24, for instance. But they might right. want, you know, maybe at the end of that, towards the approaching 24, 20, or after. Um, Things like loans that are more important later in life um, or when they enter that workforce as an adult. So I think it's a really pivotal time to create that mobile first presence uh, and something that you can really build on as this age group comes into um, the workforce and becomes an even bigger force of global spending power. So think uh, long term, think about the moment when the, this generation will uh, transit to the next uh, step and uh, will become adults and uh, the online payments, for, for instance, will be part of their daily life, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, several times a day they, they may place a payment. So this is your great opportunity to start early and to establish as a good brand they can trust and they can uh, trust their money, like one of the most precious things that you can think of. Uh, plus, uh, to be honest, I never imagined when I was that age that my kids in this age will be able to play, to pay uh, online uh, via their smartphones, and uh, it's just going to be just normal for them. It's uh, it's quite incredible <laughs> thing, if you think about it. Now, one of the KPIs that are among marketer marketing essentials is monthly active users. Um, if I remember correctly, it stands for cases when people open an app at least three times during the 30, 30 days period, right? We actually measure it any time an app is open during um, a defined period. So daily active users would be just a person has opened that app during that day. So monthly active users by our definition at App Annie would be um, that particular user open the app at least one time in the month. All right. Uh, how does Gen Z stand among other generations with respect to this metric? Uh, looking at your data, what can you tell us about Gen Z monthly active users rate uh, in different countries? Another very great question. So overall, what we've seen for Gen Z is their active user base outpaced older demos. And that kind of means that there's more of an audience. uh, The audience is growing faster, rather, the the mobile audience. Um, And this is significant because it also shows that that's their growing influence in the space. Um, And these are generally in line with population levels. Gen Z represents roughly around a third of the world's population um, and is currently the number, it's the biggest population or generation rather at this time, it's surpassed millennials. Um, And so what we saw in nearly all of the markets we analyzed, which included Indonesia, Brazil, Mexico, France, US, Germany, UK, and South Korea, Mm -hmm. uh, we saw that Gen Z's active user growth outpaced older demos. And there were a couple exceptions. So those were um, Turkey and Japan. Um, In the case of Japan, that's due to um, more of that aging population that we see. So it's more of a reflection of what's happening uh, currently from a population standpoint in the country. There are also two other standouts I'd like to call out. One was that in Indonesia, um, so we consider that you know, mobile first emerging market. We saw that Gen Z's active user base has grown nearly 40% year over year, um, and that was five percentage points higher than older demos. So that was definitely the biggest growth we saw across the, the markets we analyzed. But the largest growth differential was actually in the US, where Gen Z outpaced older demos by 2x, uh, which is pretty significant. It shows that there's rapid growth um, in mobile adoption among this generation, and it's a really fast-growing sector of the mobile audience. Yeah, it's really interesting to see because uh, for the number of years, like when you're looking at the data uh, about the um, app store's growth uh, and the app industry growth as, as a whole, you've seen that uh, like every metric that uh, succeeds uh, that exceeds the expectations usually kind of uh, being attributed to Asia like US uh, wasn't that high on this kind of 
measure for a while. But the, in terms of Gen Z, um, um, the way they adapt, um, they're actually uh, on the front front line comparing to other uh, countries, right? Yes, exactly. Especially in terms of that growth of, of the active user base. Um, it is definitely growing very fast. Okay. Uh, what app categories are popular among Gen Z folks? We actually saw uh, that Gen Z over-indexed in usage in comics, in social apps, photography, education, dating, entertainment, video players and editors, and games. Um, and the most time spent by Gen Z was typically in games and social, which is, is pretty standard for mobile. We tend to see social dominates around 50% of time. Um, and then mm -hmm. games is closely following with entertainment. Uh, what was interesting as well is when you're looking at growth, um, it's a little bit of a different story. We actually saw that finance, shopping, and entertainment were the top categories by percent growth in total time spent for Gen Z. Um, and what's really interesting about that is that those uh, actually finance and shopping actually were some of the categories that they under index. They didn't use those apps quite as much as the overall population. Um, so those are areas actually that represent strong opportunity for investment and also where business needs to, you know, businesses need to think strategically um, about how, you know, when Gen Z does move forward in those bigger parts of, you know, their financial um, autonomy and these important life events that will impact these areas, um, kind of like what we talked about in, in the beginning, it, it's important to start thinking about how this generation will come into those. Because for many, they're going to reach for their phone first. Um, and maybe that mobile first insurance company resonates better with them because all the rest of their lives are actually on mobile already. Right. It's Again, it's a great point. Uh, even though we're focusing right now on Gen Z, but when you're building your strategy as an app marketer, you always should zoom out and see a big picture, uh, what's going to happen next when these people will grow and uh, transit to the next generation. You know, culture is in the heart of our behavior, right? In conjunction with our genes, it defines our likes, dislikes, our priorities. How does Gen Z preferences on what app apps spend the bulk of the time vary in different countries? This is a great question. So there are major differences in terms of when we look at, say, games versus non-games. Um, and non-games is kind of that wide net, including everything from social to finance to shopping and all the others in between. Um, so what we saw was across most markets, Gen Z engaged more frequently with the average non-gaming app. Um, and so that means a lot more sessions on average in each app that they're using. Um, so they're much more frequent visitors, if you will, that kind of mobile or digital footprint. Um, and mm -hmm. what we saw in Japan was really interesting, where we saw that sessions were kind of uh, the average sessions per user per app uh, was nearly equal for games and apps for Gen Z. But then the session durations were a lot longer in games. And we also saw that a, a lot greater time spent in games in Japan than other markets. So that's another notable difference. And then the other countries, they similarly vary around kind of slightly where um, the time spent or the sessions over index. But on the whole, what we typically see is that Gen Z is more active um, in non-gaming apps relative to the population um, and not as active typically in games than the rest of the population. So speaking of Japan as an example of a particular culture, when you think about going to the new markets, having this kind of insight we're talking about right now is really important because we you always have to factor in uh, how people spend their time you know, on, on a daily basis. Uh, how will we be able to uh, fit in into their daily routine? There's, uh, please don't, don't make any assumption that this is going to be just the same as in U.S. or Canada or other country that is native to you. There are cultural differences between countries, and uh, you have to know more than just to you know um, go beyond the traditional marketing. Try to know the culture of the country you're trying to release your app into more. So, and yeah, um, having this uh, kind of data we're, we're just covering it give you a nice basis what you should expect. Um, now, you meant we mentioned uh, TikTok before, so. My next question is, uh, well, what about the competition between TikTok and Snapchat among Gen Z app users? Uh, who is winning? 
It's a great question and it does depend on the market. So um, and the metric, <laughs> but one yeah. of the ways we looked at this was we we did a Gen Z index is what we'd call it, which just means it's it's a metric that shows how much more does Gen Z use an app versus the overall population. It's basically what it boils down to. Um, and we did it by market. So in Q3, we saw that of all of the markets we analyzed, so mm-hmm. um, that includes Brazil, France, Germany, Indonesia, Japan, Mexico, South Korea, Turkey, UK, and US, just as a reminder. Um, across all of those markets, um, we basically had Snapchat and TikTok be the number one app that they over-indexed their use in for social and comms apps. Um, That's true of all markets, except for France, actually. Discord was Mm. the number one there. Um, But what's really interesting about it, and it does vary by market, for instance, um, in the UK, the UK and the US tend to be viewed as very similar markets in a lot of ways. They tend to move in similar ways and a lot of the same top apps kind of play out. Um, but the users, Gen Z over-indexed, uh, the number one app they over-indexed in for social and comms was actually Snapchat versus in the US, it was TikTok. So you start to see these slight differences emerge there. And but what it kind of says to us is that for, for Gen Z, the fact that these two apps were so dominant, there's basically it shows how important a video and photo first strategy is for engaging this demo, uh, along with you know creative elements like avatars and filters, maybe ephemeral messages and user generated content. Um, this is a really key part. Um, and it's good to know that for a marketing strategy as well, because maybe that's where, um, you know, video predominantly or possibly an interstitial photo heavy um, ad strategy may serve you better in this demo than just banner ads potentially. Um, So these are things to take into consideration given that these are the apps that they're really incredibly more likely to be using. Yeah, uh, I think it's a good strategy to think about generation that is really native to expressing themselves through video and photo. It's just... um, I don't think it's as relevant as uh, for this generation as to others. I I don't like I'm I'm a millennial. I think I can contribute myself to to be a millennial. I'm forty three. I think I'm still in the cohort, and I don't feel the urge to express myself the video and photo content. But for this generation, this is how they communicate, share their ideas, uh, you know, likes, dislikes, happy and sad moments, whatever. Uh, so this is what you have what kind of mindset you should have when you're building your app marketing strategy and thinking about should you use the video as the medium for your ads for this generation or not? I think you, you definitely should. Now, I agree. <laughs> now, how does Gen Z go shopping online? Is there a choice of apps dominated by Amazon as well? I hope it's not. <laughs> this was actually really interesting and a bit counterintuitive. So um, we actually saw that for Gen Z. Um, again, we're using that index, which is that measuring how much more Gen Z um, is likely to use an app than the overall population. Uh, we actually saw a really large range of apps um, and none of them ranking number one um, in these demos were, was uh, excuse me, none of them were Amazon basically. So mm-hmm. that's pretty interesting. It, Amazon didn't rank number one. Amazon tends to dominate for, you know, the total user base. It's a bit of a behemoth in the um, e-commerce and just retail generally uh, space. But this is interesting. And, and part of this could be because Amazon is so widely used by all demos. So there's a possibility, you know, Gen Z is not really over indexing to that sense because mm-hmm. they might be using it just as much as the other demos. But it also shows that, you know, if you're going to reach this generation and you want to uniquely reach this generation, there are other apps that they're uh, way more likely to use than older demos. Um, And some of this includes, you know, we see things like Etsy in the U.S. was the number one app um, by uh, that over-indexed for shopping. Um, We saw Shein was really big in Mexico and France. That was the number one app there. Um, And then Shopee was number one for Brazil and Indonesia, uh, Mercado in um, Japan. So we see an emphasis also on things like peer-to-peer marketplaces um, or smaller boutique kind of shops as well. Um, So this is really, these are important trends to know about this generation and how they're shopping. And it kind of highlights as well some of the differences, you know, we might look at it and think, okay, I, I'm going to buy something. I'll probably go to a retail site or uh, maybe we don't distinguish between uh, peer-to-peer marketplaces like eBay and, and, and 
and more traditional retailers. But mm-hmm. for this generation, it might, you know, that line might even be more of a, of a blur in that sense, you know, um, they might just say, I want to buy something. So I'm just going to go to Etsy or I might look at um, a peer to peer marketplace and see um, what I can buy and sell. And, and maybe that's a big part of their consumption habits. So it's really important to know that. I mean, it helps to plan for product roadmaps as well as understanding where they're spending time and potential partnerships and the, just the potential language to be using. Um, part of peer to peer marketplaces could be also that you have the ability to buy something a little bit cheaper than what you might buy you know, that isn't secondhand or isn't um, something of that nature. So really important to take into consideration, especially for shopping. And that's an area that um, Gen Z kind of under indexes in. So as they start to kind of inch towards that upper bound of of the age bracket and into more full-time employment and other life uh, sort of watershed moments, that's a really important thing to take into consideration when they have more disposable income to be spending on shopping. Got it, Lexi. Now, I think it's a completely different question to the to the ones we've just uh, covered. Uh, thinking about Gen Z not as a target audience, but a generation of teens, what would you like to say to your marketers? I would say, you know, th- th- this um, beyond a target audience, I mean, they're some of the fastest growing consumers on mobile um, and they have increasing spending power as, as teens for some of them that still are. Um, I think it's incredi- incredibly important to also note that, um, you know, they might have <laughs> access to their parents' spending power still as well. Um, so they're heavy, heavily mobile first um, and these, these habits haven't fully been ingrained yet. Um, so they represent a very strategic mobile market, um, but beyond being just a target market, um, you really should have a strategy for reaching them in a way that resonates with what they are um, showing are their major interests. And, and that would include things like possibly looking at user-generated content, um, appeal, appealing to them more as a, as a friend, if you will, since so much social interactions happen online. So the brand should position themselves a bit more casually, potentially, um, than a bit, you know, the formal television commercials that maybe our generation grew up with. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, tapping into this market in an authentic way that resonates with them, especially as they're forming these habits and continuing to grow in their um, in their influence. Well, as a parent, I can definitely testify they do have access to the power of their spending <laughs> of their parents. That's the fact. <laughs> okay, f- finally, how can people know more about the topics we just covered? Absolutely. So you can head to bit.ly slash mobile Gen Z report, which will give you the direct link to our report, or you can head to appannie.com slash insights. Um, and you'll find the report on one of our blog posts there as well, and lots of other wonderful analyses and content to, to browse through. Terrific. Thanks a lot for your time and covering our podcast, Lexi. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Bye-bye. And that was Lexi Sito, Senior Market Insights Manager at App Any. To listen to more episodes, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. Just search for Business of Apps and you will find us easily. We release episodes on Mondays, so subscribe and you'll be able to get new episodes on your smartphone, tablet, or computer as soon as we release them. And please, don't forget to leave us your review and comment. It is highly appreciated. And all episodes will be uh, available on businessofapps.com. Thank you for listening. See you next week. This is the Business of Apps podcast, bringing you actionable insights from the leaders of the global app industry and the world's fastest growing apps. You can find more app news, data, and analysis over at businessofapps.com. Thank you for listening to the Business of Apps podcast. For more, head on over to businessofapps.com.